I like how it's playing this music. And I feel like that we're about to go murder. Are we about to go murder somebody? School year got away from him a little. Despite everything he'd been through, John found himself returning to something like a routine. He spent some time with Lizzie, but they didn't do anything too intense. Just shorter fun dates, nothing too romantic. The sky still looked very gray to him, but he felt lighter than he had in a long term. On occasion, he still headed to the library to try to look up more about Koei Tech, see if he could find out more about Lizzie's condition. It wasn't going terribly well. All he had to go on was old microfilms and random ideas, which is part of why he brought Lizzie but she seemed uninterested. Eventually he sat back and tapped his finger on the desk, wondering if it was worth continuing. Lizzie, uh, when I was at your house, you made some pretty strong statements about Koei Tech. Do you know anything about them? No, I'm sorry, John, I can't really help you. It's just a feeling, a strong feeling. Not as strong as the sense that you were the one I was looking for, but I'm certain they don't want what's best. Sure, but does any corporation? This is different. After that, though, she couldn't explain herself any further. Seeing she didn't like the topic of conversation, John decided to let it go. It's not like we can learn anything meaningful about them. I mean, we're just a couple of kids. It's not like their secrets would be printed in local paper. Well, we can leave it. We have more immediate concerns, don't we? Yes, actually, I had something I've been wanting to ask you. The county fair's coming up next month. Can, can we go together? I've always thought it'd be the kind of cheap event, but maybe it wouldn't be so bad with you. Yay, look forward to it. It was only later that John remembered something his classmates said. Elementary schoolers went to the fair to play games. Middle schoolers went for roller coasters. And high schoolers went to get laid. Was that what Lindsay had been meaning to imply? Had she just signed up for more than he'd realized? <laughs> or had he? But over the next several days, she didn't act any different and just seemed to look forward to it with innocent anticipation. So it felt awkward bringing it up. And the longer he didn't mention it, the stranger it got. So day by day, they eventually reached the date of the county fair. Lizzie met him at the edge of the fair, shifting from foot to foot eagerly. Her face lit up when she saw him and she immediately hurried to meet him. Oh, you're finally here. This is gonna be so much fun. I'm so glad to spend time with you, but honestly, I haven't gone to the fair in a few years. Well, I'm sure we'll have fun. Besides, the important thing is that people will see us together. What? Dating doesn't really count unless the guy's willing to go to the fair with you. Guys don't talk like that? Uh, no, but I'm happy to be seen with you. Yay! Let's see what they have. For a while they just wondered, checking out all the attractions. Since the fair was getting started up, it was easy to grab some food and cotton candy, which Lizzie happily fed in pieces of while they walked. Thinking about what being together meant for her, John realized that he didn't mind. After everything they'd been through, boyfriend and girlfriend felt like cheap words. He felt like the hardest stretch had been behind them. He'd seen Lizzie at her worst, he would be happy to see, be with her at her best. Oh, is that a knife throwing booth? Dot, dot, dot. But we don't have to visit. Come on, let's go this way. Instead, Lizzie directed them towards the high striker booth. John kind of marveled at it. He'd seen them in pictures, but he hadn't been sure they actually existed anymore. She's about to wreck this thing. She's so strong. Some classmates he barely recognized were trying their luck at the, at, at the moment. Blah, blah, blah. Swinging the hammer high overhead and bring it down to the target as hard as they could. None of them got the slider more than halfway at the bell. Hey, John, I'll try. Man, is there even a point? Ah, I'm going to suck. Oh, but try. Giving in, he inserted his coin. Lifting the hammer felt almost too heavy for him, but Lizzie was watching, so he couldn't give up. He brought the hammer down as best he could. It felt like a strong blow, but the slider barely moved up a quarter of the distance. Some of his watching classmates laughed. See, I'm pathetic. No, you just haven't learned how to use your strength. Here, let me help you. She slid up behind him, wrapping her arms around his and changing his grip on the hammer. With her body so close to his, the watching classmates stopped laughing. See, you need to throw your body into it. So set your feet like this, shift your hips a little. He felt like a, he felt a little like a doll being moved by, by her like that, but the pose she put him in did feel better. More of his body would be behind the swing of the blow. Good, good, now try again. She backed away and John took a deep breath. If he sucked again, he was going to feel absolutely worthless. But no, he couldn't let himself think like that. Instead, he brought the hammer down as hard as he could. To his surprise, it actually made it most of the way up. It didn't ring the bell, but it was better than he'd seen anyone else do. See? Good job! She seemed absolutely elated, even with, <laughs> with his mildly improved performance. But despite himself, John found, him, found that his mood was improved. They walked away together, ignoring the watchers entirely. 
I'm surprised you know so much about this kind of thing. Oh, hammers are interesting. They're just very, very messy. <laughs> I should have known better than to ask. There was a moment of hesitation in her eyes, but she saw his smile and then returned it. <laughs> oh my god. At another booth, Lizzie managed to toss every single ring into the furthest pin. That won her a giant stuffed bear, which she laughed at and gave it to him to hold. <laughs> She's the man of this relationship. You know, the, the boy position. We, we got reverse roles here. I can't do anything and she's just like, she's showing me how to do stuff and she's just really good at everything. Yeah, you wear the pants in this relationship and that's okay. For a while, he was having a great time, but then still carrying the bear, he heard an unpleasant snicker. Are you fucking serious? You two came here to play around with stuffed animals? One of his classmates was there with his girlfriend, pawing at her chest while she giggled and swanning at his hands. They both leered at John and Lizzie holding hands. I mean, what are you, 12? Once, taunts might have bothered him, but now John didn't care. He didn't even have any desire to prove his friend was wrong. When he thought about everything he had been through with Lizzie, he felt her squeeze his hand. He just didn't care. Come on, let's ditch these losers. His classmate's girlfriend led them away, and John didn't really care about that either. When he gave Lizzie a smile, though, she seemed a little irked. You could just ignore them, you know. Yes... But that won't be satisfying. Come on. This way. I like how it's playing this music. And I feel like that we're about to go murder. Are we about to go murder somebody? She dragged him into a narrow alleyway between two stalls. A little ways down, there was a closed off space between several temporary stalls. Surrounded by three sides, the sounds of fair seemed softer. He became very aware of how alone they were as Lizzie slid off her jacket. Ooh! Ooh! Finally! Finally! God dang! I almost fell off a roof, had to put up with your crazy self, and then I had to I, I had to be locked away in your basement after you chloroformed me and came up with an axe for like a week. Oh, finally! Man, I ain't never had to work this hard to get some. Jesus! You wanna do something not childish at all? Yes? I think I do. I know I can be a difficult girlfriend sometimes. But I want to show you that I can be nice too. He leaned back against the wall, needing a moment to catch his breath. Lindsay, see, little <laughs> Lindsay. God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. L Lizzie, Lizzie, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Lindsay seemed to have no trouble fixing her skirt and then rising to give him a hug. Wow, that felt amazing. Good, I liked it too. Maybe we can do more of this sometime. <laughs> I guess my performance was, uh, it, it it got a good out of her. Oh yeah, that was good. That was nice. Yeah, you know, good job, John. I guess oh, we can do that more. You know, maybe better next time, John. <laughs> yeah, John, get it. You did it, John. Oh, you got me sweaty, John. Look at that. Look at that. Whew! Had to sweat so hard to get this. The cold air forced him to step away from it as soon to get his cock back into his pants before it froze. Ah 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 ah. Still, he felt warm. Not just in a sexual way. Ooh, John, mission complete. Roll the credits. We did it. We finally, finally did it. <sighs> Soon they headed back out of the alley. John felt like everyone must have noticed, but no one even looked at him. Actually, things outside seemed different. He frowned and glanced at Lizzie, who paused for a moment, then nodded. Is something wrong? The sounds in the distance aren't normal. There's too much tension. Uh-oh. She senses something. As soon as she said it, he realized that she was right. It didn't sound like people were talking and having fun. They were upset about something. Without needing to discuss it, they headed towards the source of the commotion. Soon they arrived at a densely packed group of people, clustered around a line of police tape. He could see a few cops moving within it, and spinning lights lit the entire scene in strange colors. But he couldn't tell what happened. Lizzie, now we were smashing, you didn't do it. Lizzie shook her head, muttering something to herself. Not sure how to help her, John found a familiar face in the crowd and tapped her shoulder. Hey, what's going on? Oh god, it's horrible. Someone from our school was killed. What? Who? His face was... was taken off. Entirely. They're still trying to identify him. Oh shit. Do they know who did it? They say... I, I can't believe it, but they said it was some girl from our school.
Lizzie. Lizzie, when did you have time to take some dude's face off? She stabbed two of the police officers, like, with a knife. They had to be rushed to the hospital. Lizzie, you got a twin? Whoa. What about her? They shot her? Seriously? Or at least, that's what I heard. I just got here to see the body before they covered it up. But I didn't see the violent part. I see. He wanted to back away in any case, but Lizzie was tugging on his arm. John nodded quickly, a quick goodbye, and let her drag him away from the crowd. John. Lizzie, do you know something about this? You know it wasn't me, right? You trust me, don't you? I'm not worried about that. You're with me the entire time. But do you know something? There was... Uh, another girl. Uh, not like me, but similar. In our school, really? Her mother knew Abby. They got kicked out of the program together. For the same reason? Being pregnant? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I never liked her. We never really spoke. The music. Do you have a do you have a crazy girl rival? Is that what we're doing right here? But I think she could I think she could have been capable of this. Then what do we do? I think we should go. Stay far away from this. I'm not arguing with you here. She went with him to the door and kissed, and he kissed her goodnight. Well, they both knew that things hadn't been entirely settled. Not yet. Wait, what? What? You can't just throw... You just can't throw this curveball at me. Why does this involve us directly? Because there was another girl... What? Okay, whatever, it's fine. He tried to watch the news, but it was all meaningless speculation about what could have caused the girl to murder her boyfriend so brutally. He had to turn it off afterwards, only a few minutes... Though there were still more questions. When he went to bed, he found they slipped away from him instead. He thought about Lizzie's happy face uh, during their date and falling asleep smiling. I thought the game was fixed to be over. I thought, I thought mission was complete. Roll the credits, you know. We done hit it and we're done. It's not over. For real? There's another crazy girl now that I have to deal with? I survived Lizzie. The next morning, John woke feeling the best he'd felt in a long time. He had to remind himself that most people would be in mourning over the two murders the night before. The school had the flag at half mast, and the class was canceled so they could have a special assembly about the incident. It meant basically nothing to him and most of the other students as well. It seemed to have shaken everyone else to the core, but John still felt good. Maybe that meant something was wrong with him, but he didn't really care. He felt like he and Lizzie were close, were even closer than before. But when she arrived, there was a strange look on her face. John, something is wrong. Someone, someone wants to take you away from me. Who? They, they said they shot the girl, right? So she's not even alive? Liz, are you feeling well? Please, we need to run away together or we won't have another chance. It seemed like she had become more unstable. And what she was saying must have been her paranoia. Yet she seemed strangely intense about the whole thing. Just run away? How would that even work? I've made plans. We could do it, I'm sure. As serious as she sounded, perhaps this was necessary for her to stay stable. But doing something that wild out of nowhere, after everything that had happened to them, could he? Would that just make her even worse? Oh, Jesus. Lizzie, what are you talking about? You gotta tell me some details here. You just can't, just can't drop this on me, girl. But let's run away together. I love you, boo. Where will we go? Will that just attract attention? No, I'm prepared. We can say the murder made us want to transfer, and then we go away and, li and live safe from all this. If you say so, then I, I trust you. Then we need to get away from here, far, far away. That very day, Lizzie arranged everything, pulling him out of school and apparently faking the permission slip. She seemed in earnest, mad jealousy, as if a woman would sweep in at any moment and take him away. John went along with her in a daze, shocked by how fast it happened. Lizzie told him to say the murder had shaken him up too much, wouldn't let him see anyone, even Miss Smythe. Other students were also shell-shocked, but didn't raise too much attention. But when they left town in a car with supplies Lizzie had prepared, John almost felt like someone was following them. Was Lizzie's paranoia just rubbing off on him? He told himself it had to be that, because eventually the feeling vanished. They moved away, finished school, found new lives. For years afterward, John wondered about that moment. He had, had he made the right choice, choice to support Lizzie, or they had just, or had he just encouraged the necessary paranoia? Maybe it didn't matter at all. Yet somehow he couldn't make himself believe that. 
Perhaps in another life, things could have gone differently. Occasionally, he wondered why Lizzie still seemed so nervous about the entire thing. When he asked, she just told him that it didn't matter anymore and they were safe. I guess that... Eh. Happy ending, I guess, right? I guess I needed to stay to figure out what happened. As the years passed, she began to calm down. She still had days where she needed him to hold her tight. Just like he had days where he needed her support. Despite everything, they were a normal couple. After they were married, Lizzie softened again. His co-workers told him he was lucky to have such a beautiful, devoted wife, and he was. He just had to pretend that he was the only one with the, he was the one with the enormous collection of knives. And where's that hand at, girl? There is another path. Ha! Girl! Why are you looking so crazy at me right now? We did it! We got we got an ending. But no, I'm not done. I need to know. I gotta stay, girl. I gotta stay. Look, Lizzie, I'm sorry, but no. Things are safe now. No one's gonna steal me away from you. Okay. The encounter with Lizzie dampened his mood substantially, but he found himself that he was still correct. They had they had gotten through the difficult time, at their, and in their lives, things were better now. After school, he got a call to Mrs. Smythe's office. He considered not just going at all. He wanted to spend the evening with Lizzie, but the note seemed urgent. When he arrived... He found Mrs. Smythe with a rather grim expression on her face. John, I hope you're doing all right after the incident. I understand the boy who died was a friend of yours. That felt like an eternity ago, but he realized it more or less true. He shook his head slowly. An old friend, but yeah, it's hard to believe. Well, I thought we should have a conversation. It's okay, Miss Smythe. I feel like I'm doing okay. There are other students who probably need more help than I do. I'm afraid I must insist. Lie down. He almost defied her then, but in the end decided to do as she asked. Their possessions always made him feel better. It couldn't hurt. No reason to draw attention to himself or Lizzie after all. All right, what do you want to talk about? My feelings about the incident? No, there's no time for that today. Huh? You need to relax. Immediately. John began to settle back into the couch, letting her words become a meaningless hum. For the first time, he realized how, how wrong that was. He lay there, apparently relaxed, as he tried to think back their past therapy sessions. The more he thought about them, the more he realized an ominous pattern. He could barely remember any details. They would chat for a while, then the rest of the session was just a white haze. Ready? I need you to remain calm and come with me. She spoke flatly, as she expected to obey without question. What was this, some sort of hypnosis? Well, realizing she might get upset, John slowly got to his feet. He wasn't sure how he was supposed to act, but he settled for straightforward obedience. Oh, man. Lizzie's right about everything. Miss Smythe does want to control me, and she's been controlling me with drugs. Mm, delayed response. Have you been taking your Paxatine lately? He gave half a shrug and just stared back, and Miss Smith frowned. She shook her head and gestured him to follow. I suppose it doesn't matter. All this is normal. You want to follow me and wait instru you you want to follow me and await instructions. John had no choice but to do as so as he left the building, but inside he was panicking. What was he supposed to do now? If he'd seen Lizzie, he could have begged her to follow with his eyes, but he didn't even see a hint of her, not even watching him from around the corner. They walked outside in the parking lot where Mrs. Smythe opened a passenger seat at the door of her car and gestured him to get in. He stepped inside and tried to keep the tension off his face, instead just straight forward. They didn't drive very far, just to a warehouse a few blocks from school. It looked half abandoned, but when their car approached the gates, uh, the gates and then one of the garage doors opened for her. Inside there were multiple armed men in gray body armor. He didn't see any insignias on them or any indication who they worked for. Why don't you take a seat, John? He got out of the car to obey, only then spotting a blank white table, two chairs placed in the center. The warehouse floor sitting down, he tried to stare blankly at the table, even as he analyzed what it held. There were two metal briefcases, and just to make things strange, a box of surgical gloves. Remain calm and focus on me, John. You're aware of your surroundings, but willingly, but willing to accept what I say. Uh-huh. Not the most elegant of lies, but it seemed to work. Miss Smythe barely even glanced at him, instead pulling out a pair of surgical gloves. We've brought you here for your own protection, John. I'm afraid your girlfriend is not who you believe she is. 
Lizzie, what's the problem? Is she okay? I'm afraid not. Not even close. Years ago, Koitek... Oh, she's about to tell me the whole story. It was the end of a company at the very forefront of biomedical, uh, biochemical research. But I'm afraid some of the company founders were less than ethical. What does that have to do with us? Shut up, I'm getting there. Testing standards were rather lax. In particular, there were certified tests of mood drugs that could probably never have been certified. Dozens of lawsuits were settled for families that suffered the tests. That is right and good. Kotech acknowledged the mistakes of the past. Unfortunately, some of those mistakes were more enduring. Four pregnant women participants in tests without disclosing their pregnancies. They were, of course, removed as soon as their condition was realized, but it was too late for the embryos. One became completely non-viable and was stillborn. There's conflicting evidence about the second, but it appears the boy may have been com have committed suicide at a young age, but we are concerned with the last two. One of them was the murder the murderer who, who police put down last night, and the last was Lizzie Doss. Huh? You're saying Lizzie has some kind of condition? Early investigations suggested both the girls turned out normal, so the matter was closed, but recent events make it seem very likely that both of them were deeply disturbed. This is weird. <laughs> this is weird. Like, my student counselor is like some secret organization person. I'll be blunt. The girl is not remotely stable. She's danger to herself and others. Do you really think that would work? That he would just nod and accept that story with guards all around them, armed, like, uh, pre uh, paramilitary forces? Then again, perhaps she was counting on her therapy to have controlling effect. Either way, all he could do was keep up his act. There was no doubt tr there was no doubt truth in what she was saying, and he needed to learn more. Then, what do you want me to do? Why can't all your guards take care of it? John, we don't want to hurt the girl, not at all. We want to help her. We would prefer she came in quietly. Ah, they're trying to use me to go and, and bring her in. The implicit threat hung in the air. John swallowed and nodded. Then what am I supposed to do? The girl trusts you. If you can administer a sedative to her, then we hope we can medicate her without any unnecessary struggling. Miss Smythe opened the first metal case, showing a number of syringes filled with disturbingly bright liquid. They looked like chemicals that would melt metal, not ones that would go in anyone's body. If you are receptive to our plan, we will provide you with a variety of options. We have extra strength sedatives here, for example. However, based on the incident yesterday, I personally believe we may need more extreme option. I would advise you use one of uh, use this one. Her fingers brushed the last syringe of the briefcase, filled with a bright red liquid. This is a modified version of the chemical that Lizzie was exposed to in utero. Uh, wouldn't that be really dangerous? Her oh, look at that grin she's got. Her body can barely handle the level of exposure she's already received. An additional dose should lock her down entirely. And you expect me? to convince her to be injected with something like that. It does not need to be injected introversely. Uh, autopsy of the other girl indicates the chemical has been sexually effect on muscle tissue, so an injected into any muscle would be effective. Autopsy. This was more of a conspiracy than I imagined. There's no time to reel from that now. John simply nodded as if it was vaguely reasonable. Well, I want her to get the help she needs. Are you sure this won't hurt her? Let me be honest with you, John. There will likely be some pain for her as her body rejects the chemical, but it may be the only way to ensure that she remains, she harms no one and cooperates with treatment. I see. He sat forward and held his hand in his hands if he needed to think, which he desperately did need to do. Would they really just give him the syringes and let him go? He doubted it. At the very least, they'd be keeping him under heavy surveillance. Talking directly would be impossible. In fact, he had to wonder if everything Miss Smythe was saying wasn't just a backup plan. It might be no accident that Lizzie was missing. Maybe they were looking for her. But ultimately, he didn't have enough information. And he didn't see any way of getting to the point where he needed to reach uh, so many security forces present. Smythe, HQ hasn't responded. Damn it. We'll just proceed with the plan then. No, it's not that. We seem to have lost our connection. Oh, shoot! Lizzie's taking him out right now! Then this case is completely under my authority. John, we're counting on you to end this without anyone else getting hurt. I... I hope I can do that. You can, I'm sure of it. Then should I... At that point, the radio crackled. One of the soldiers raised a walkie-talkie and tapped the button. Oh man, here she comes. 
What was that? Perimeter? <laughs> attack! <laughs> Under uh, attack! Blonde haired girl! <laughs> School dress! <laughs> Skirt! <laughs> Shit, directly? All right, switch to plan C. Get moving. Soldiers rushed to obey and John rose with him. Surely it had to be Lizzie attacking then. But what did that mean? It's freaking super soldier Lizzie here. He only got one step before two soldiers grabbed his arms and forced him back down the chair. He struggled, but they were adults and far stronger than he was. I'm sorry, John, but it looks like you'll have to serve as bait. As she spoke, she opened the second metal case. When, this one held syringes filled with clear liquid, one which she lifted and examined. What? Miss Smythe, what are you doing? This is gonna hurt, I'm afraid, but if she snapped, it's all you're good for now. He tried to struggle even harder, but the soldiers got him strapped to the chair. Bound in place, he was helpless to do anything, but twitched as Mrs. Smythe approached with the needle. Before he could do anything to stop her, she injected it straight into the vein of his arm. The pain was instant. His world went white and his ears rang so loudly he could barely see or hear anyone. Miss Smythe was desperately giving orders and the soldiers were moving about, but he couldn't understand any of it. Oh, the cop out, man. The cop out. I don't get to see the action. She's got to save me for myself because I chose to stay here, right? All right, whatever. He had never felt anything so painful before. His, thra his thrashing partially tore one of the straps binding him. Then he slumped down with agony still washing through him. Through the pain, he dimly saw Lizzie arrive and slaughter the remaining soldiers. She seemed heavily injured, but it didn't stop her erratic, deadly movements. Lizzie had Miss Smythe pinned now. She was saying something, but he couldn't hear over the rushing in his ears. It felt like his heart was going to burst with every beat. Distantly, he realized Lizzie was threatening Miss Smythe, then torturing her. Whatever was said, it didn't matter. He fell away into blazing white pain. Jo Jesus Christ, Lizzie! Lizzie done killed everybody! God dang, Lizzie! I like my original ending better. We just, we just left and had a happy family, you know? Or, you know, smashed all the time. Lizzie done killed everybody. He faded back into reality with cool hands on the side of his face, piercing through the agony all around him. Somehow he managed to open his eyes despite the pain. Lizzie's lips moved, but he couldn't hear anything. He realized she was crying and didn't understand why. All he wanted was for the pain to stop. She leaned forward to kiss him, and the kiss was sharp and cold. He kissed back for a long time before he realized that her axe had entered his chest. It felt cool. Almost pleasant. The burning, and the burning hot white all around it began to fade into darkness. The last thing he saw before it all fell away was Lizzie. He tried to say goodbye, but it was too late. Game over! Dun, dun, dun! Hope glimmers stronger on another path. Restart the game for a better result. <laughs> oh, man! Oh, Jesus, I died! Lizzie! She had to put me out of my misery, I guess. Okay. God dang, man. I wonder how many endings there are to this game. There's one thing I want to see. And that's when uh, she comes up to the stairs with a knife. I'm gonna run. <laughs> Don't run away. As he reached the front foyer, John dared to look behind him. He saw Lizzie was right on his heels, still smiling. He gave a strangled cry and tried to put everything he had into running, but it didn't matter. Lizzie kept pace with him and then slammed the door, brought him to a, a stop. She hit his back, pinned him there. She got me anyway. She gets you, she gets you anyway. She doesn't care. Lizzie's a freaking super soldier. They beg. Please don't do this. Oh, John, I won't hurt you. Don't you know that? Please. Founding center X down the side table, move forward. I realized the other hand was holding the real threat, the cloth. Yeah, she just gets you. It doesn't matter. You get got no matter what. <laughs>